Hi friends, I'm Cam Soper, a content developer working with .NET at Microsoft. My favorite thing about .NET is how it can run on a wide variety of devices, from tiny microcontrollers to powerful servers. In this series, I'm going to talk about using .NET on common single board computers like Raspberry Pi, Orange Pi, and Hummingboard. Since these devices are small and inexpensive, they're often used in Internet of Things, or IoT, scenarios. I'll be using Raspberry Pi for these videos, but these concepts generally all apply to other single board computers. In later videos, I'll show you how to deploy, run, and debug code on these devices. Then I'll show you how to use the .NET IoT libraries to control LEDs, relays, sensors, and displays. But in this video, I'm going to start by showing how I prepare a Raspberry Pi for use with .NET. Then I'll show you where to find the documentation and how to run a quick demo of .NET on your Raspberry Pi. Here are a couple examples of Raspberry Pi. The board on the left is a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. It's a single board computer that's about the size of a credit card. It has a quad-core 64-bit ARM processor and a variety of ports, including USB, Ethernet, HDMI, and composite audio video. It comes with up to 8GB of integrated RAM. This other board on the right is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. It's a little older, but it's still a great device for .NET. You'll also need a micro SD card. You can use any size, but I recommend at least 8 gigabytes. You'll need a micro SD card reader to write the operating system to the card. Raspberry Pi supports several Linux-based operating systems. For these videos, we'll use Raspberry Pi OS. To install Raspberry Pi OS, first install and run the Raspberry Pi imager from raspberrypi.com. Here's the Imager app. To image the SD card, I'll first select an OS. Instead of the default 32-bit OS, I recommend selecting a 64-bit variant from the Raspberry Pi OS Other menu. Since we won't be using the desktop environment, I'll be selecting the light version to save space on the micro SD card. Speaking of my SD card, I'll select the card I want to write to here. Now I need to configure this Raspberry Pi to accept remote connections, so I'll go into the advanced options. First, note that the default host name is Raspberry Pi. I'm going to leave that as is, but you might want to change it to something more descriptive, especially if there are multiple Raspberry Pis on your network. Next I'll enable SSH. This will allow remote connections to the Raspberry Pi from my development PC. Then I'll specify a password for the default user, Pi. This is the user I'll use to log into the device. Since I plan to use Wi-Fi, I'll specify the SSID, password, and country here. You can also connect your Raspberry Pi using an Ethernet cable. I'll specify my time zone and locale to make it easier to work with dates and times. Now that it's configured, I'll save my changes and write the SD card. Now I'll insert the SD card into my Raspberry Pi's SD card slot. Then I'll connect USB power and wait a minute or two for the operating system to boot for the first time. If you're going to be using a wired Ethernet connection to connect to your Raspberry Pi, this is a good time to plug that in too. After the device is done booting, I'll open a shell on my development machine and use the SSH command to connect to my Raspberry Pi. The syntax is ssh username at hostname, where username is the default user pi, and hostname is the hostname we specified when we imaged the SD card. On the first connection, you'll be prompted to verify that you want to connect to this host. After that, provide the password you specified earlier. If you see a prompt like this, you're connected to the Raspberry Pi. If you're unable to connect, make sure the Raspberry Pi is connected to your network and that you're using the correct hostname. You can also try connecting to the device's IP address, which you can retrieve from your router. If you're still having trouble, try connecting to the Raspberry Pi using a monitor and keyboard. From there, you can use the ifconfig command to get the IP address. Now my device is set up and I'm ready to run some code. We'll do that in the next video. But for now, if you have a Raspberry Pi Sense Hat, I'll show you how to use it to run a quick demo of .NET on Raspberry Pi. The Sense Hat, or hardware attached on top, is a board that plugs into the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header. It has a variety of sensors including a gyroscope, accelerometer, and magnetometer. 
It also has a joystick and an LED matrix. I'm going to follow the instructions in the .NET IoT Quick Start Guide. The Quick Start Guide is found in the .NET IoT docs located at this URL. The Quick Start Guide walks you through running a script that installs the SDK, downloads the sample code, and runs the sample app. Here's the code for the sample app. It's a pretty short program. I won't go over it in detail because we'll be diving into similar code in later videos, but feel free to review it on your own. For now, I'm just going to run the app to verify the Sense Hat is working. Here's my Sense Hat. I've installed some LED darkening film to control the brightness of the LED matrix on camera. My Raspberry Pi is powered off, and I'm ready to install the Sense Hat. Once it's plugged in, you can power on the Raspberry Pi. I need to make a configuration change so the Raspberry Pi can talk to the Sense Hat. Once the Raspberry Pi boots up and I'm connected, I'll run the Raspberry Pi configuration app with sudo raspi config. Then I'll go into the interfacing options menu and enable the I squared C interface. After that, I need to install the git command line client so the script can download the code. I'll run sudo apt update to update the package list. Then I'll run sudo apt install git to install git. When the git client is installed, I'll paste in the command from the guide. This command downloads and installs the .NET SDK, clones the sample code, and then builds and runs the app. As you can see, the sense hat is functioning properly. The sensors are supplying data to the app, and the LED matrix is displaying a dot on a blue background. I can move the dot with the joystick, and if I click it, the background turns red. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to deploy, run, and debug code on ARM devices like Raspberry Pi. I'll see you then!